What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another video and today we are talking about the SNES, the NES Mini Killer. Now for some of you that don't know what this is, we just made a couple of these. I've sent out about maybe 10 to 15 of these so far. Uh, I am on Etsy now, so you will be able to find it on Etsy. I'll put the link in the description below. But basically, this right here, it even looks like a little NES. This right here is housing a Raspberry Pi, and it is supporting 128 gigabytes of gaming. This thing's clocked in at 16,480 games in this little thing. It literally fits in the palm of your hand. So again, this right here is the mini NES, the mini Super Nintendo, I call it. This is the killer of it. You could buy a mini NES that'll play 20 games. This thing will do that, plus the 700 games from the Super Nintendo, plus arcade, almost everything. We're gonna boot it up, we're gonna load it up. Unfortunately, today I am at work, so I don't have like the whole like um, screen to screen recorder, but I'll set up the screen and I'll show you how many games are on this thing, what systems are on it, and what to expect when you do get your mini NES, Super Nintendo, SNES killer. Before we plug it in and all that, it's very simple. It's gonna come with your SNES, with the Raspberry Pi, and the 128 gigabyte memory card in the back, ready to go, set and program. It'll also come with two USB Super Nintendo style controllers. Yes, these are wired. I could get you the 8-bit, 8 8-bit 8 wireless Bluetooth ones, but obviously they will run more in the price. And obviously with the two controllers, you will also get the power supply. You will also get the power supply, which now actually has a nice little convenient switch on it. It makes it easy to turn on and turn off. So without further ado, let's get our HDMI cable and let's turn this bad boy on and I'll show you exactly how easy it is to get this plugged in, ready to play, no configurations at all. This thing will be ready to go. I'm not gonna obviously show you how to plug it in and all that, but it's very simple. You got your HDMI ports, you got your power supply. In the front, the door opens and you have your four USB slots. You can put the controls in any slot, but figure one, two, three, four. I got my controllers. I'm not gonna unwrap them. They are about six feet long and wire and all that. Very simple flick of the switch. My TV is set to HDMI. You should see the screen flash just like that. Your, you know, whatever TV you have, it'll say whatever HDMI, no signal. And then you get the Project HyperPi and it's gonna load up and it's gonna boot up. So right now we're just gonna let it boot up. I'm not gonna really cut it. I'm not really gonna cut it and edit this. So we're just gonna let it boot. And uh, while it's booting, we'll talk about what we're gonna look at first. So off the bat, right now we're looking at the back end. This isn't the attract mode. This is the back end. This is like behind the scenes. This is kind of like a very basic kind of setup on how HyperPi and you know the system configurations and all that, how it's set up. So when you get when you get this, you're not gonna get this exact kind of startup. It's gonna be actually a little bit nicer. Um, but right now we're gonna kind of look at this and we're gonna look at how many games and what systems we have and all that. Now again, keep in mind that this is like the back end so there's going to be a couple of things that will be shown on the screens and systems uh such as like ms dos um scum vm uh some other kind of no name brand games that i know such as like uh game and watch they might have like one or two games on it some of them might not have it at all but when i switch to a track mode and what you get as a customer you won't even see those as an option so they'll kind of be disappeared and all that this right now is a brand new install so this is kind of like me kind of setting it up on my end. You don't obviously do this, but I'll do this on my end. Uh, but again, we're gonna kind of load it up and I'll show you how many systems and what and how many games are in each system. Again, I'm kind of trying not, again, I'm gonna try not to like cut and edit and all that. I really don't wanna, you know, spend too much time and I don't really wanna spend, I don't really wanna show what's not there and you know, try to fib it and okay, it takes a minute to load up. Um, this again right now is loading emulation station. It's not loading the attract mode So it's gonna take a little bit longer than normal. Um, I'm not gonna time it. I never time these things, but uh, I did make a video in the past about my experience with a Raspberry Pi and I'll be honest. It's still very difficult um, The main thing that people have to understand is that a Raspberry Pi is it's not a computer. There's no RAM to it There's no memory. There's no CPU. So you can't really put out the high-end games like you can with like a laptop per se. So yeah, this will play some like Nintendo 64 games. It will play like one or two PlayStation games, 
but you can't really expect like amazing graphics and all that out of a Raspberry Pi. Uh, again, this right here is what I call like the back end mode. As you can see right now, the Amiga, I don't even think I have a game on that. We're gonna slide through it. No, you'll see your game amount right here, but let's go all the way to the left. And we're gonna go first, retro prize basically settings. Again, you don't see this. We're gonna go through it real quick. Scum VM, again, I have no games on this, so this is not gonna be seen. Sega 32X, you have 33 games. Sega CD, you got 25. The Super Famicom, you got 486. Again, in my other video, I did kind of do like a counter, um, but I did already count this. This is gonna hit 16,000. You got your SG-1000, which again, there's some systems that I don't even know personally. I'm only 28, but you got them. They're there. Luckily, they're small files, so I was able to fit it. Super Nintendo this is why I call it the Super Nintendo, the SNES Mini Killer. You got 786 games, not 30 like you got it with the other, you know, branded name. 786. Turbo Graphics 16, you got 94. Turbo Graphics CD, you got nothing. So that's not even going to be showing up. Vectrex should be nothing. I don't have that. Oh, what should I do? Vectrex, we actually have 21. Perfect. Virtual Boy, which is not really that great of a system when it first came out, but it's only got 24 games on it. Sinclair, another game system that I don't even know, but there's 375 games to it. The Amiga, I know I don't have anything. Amstrad is a big one. It has about almost close to 3,000, 2947. Your arcade, the classics, you got 2962. Atari 2600, you got 648. Atari 5200, you got 72. Atari 7800, you got 59. The Lynx, you got 76. The Commodore, I've I've been contemplating this. So the Commodore 64, you need a keyboard. You do need an actual computer keyboard. You can plug it into the USB. I'm not giving you that keyboard. So you could let me know if you don't want that. Um, I'm gonna make a tutorial later on if you wanna add it later on, like you could make it, basically I hide it in the game system, but I could show you how to unhide it. Um, again, a lot of games to it, but you do need a keyboard for that. Even the ColecoVision, I believe you do need a keyboard for that. Daphne, which is a great game, uh, great like Dragon's Lair, you got 16. The Dreamcast, again, this is a system that is there. It's not gonna, it'll play all the games, but I'm not gonna say that it's gonna play it amazingly. Family computer disk system, you got 90 games. Game & Watch is a pretty cool little system. I played it on the on my MAM arcade laptop, pretty cool. The Game Gear, you got 250. The Game Boy Old School, I love this, 565. The Game Boy Advance, I, I've literally been playing a lot of the Game Boys with this, 1,036. Game Boy Color, you got 535. The Sega Master System, you got 281. Sega Mega Drive, you got 782. The Mega Drive itself, 235. MSX, I believe, is another keyboard based one. I might be wrong, but 567. N64, I believe you have like eight. Yeah. The Nintendo DS, you got 22. Neo Geo, you got 142. The NES, you got 791. That's why we call it the Super Nintendo, the SNES, the NES Mini Killer. Neo Geo Pocket, you got nine, the pocket color, you got 40. MS-DOS, I, I have two, but I'm surprised you even have that two, but it's not that great on this, to be honest. Again, that's another keyboard thing. And your PlayStation, you have three, I believe. You got three. Again, it doesn't play it that amazingly, but it's there, okay? Again, this is, a, this is the end that you don't see. You won't see this um, kind of setup. This again is like a very basic kind of setup. But again, it's all there, it's in alphabetical order. You could switch systems by going left and right. Let me lower the TV. Simple. This again is like the basic kind of setup. So again, that really, I just kind of did this to show you the amount of games you have on this. I'm gonna switch it now to attract mode and you're gonna see how that loads up now. Okay, so again, this right now, we're gonna, we're gonna boot into attract mode. I didn't really switch it off, but it's rebooting by itself. But again, I kind of want to do this with no edits, so I don't really know how long this video is going to take, but it shouldn't take longer than five minutes, I hope. Um, I always say that, and usually it gets longer. Uh, been streaming a lot, live streaming with the hyperspin kind of setups that we're doing. Um, but real quick, you're going to hear the intro video. Again, I don't really want to cut it. I don't want, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, fast boot times. I'd rather you see it live. 
Um, it's gonna go through the lines on that. You're gonna hear that. This is literally what you see. So when you plug it in, you know, I, I'm not counting it, but I'm figuring we're at like, what, 45 seconds? And it'll boot. Very nice, simple attract mode. Again, my only downside to this compared to like the laptop based systems is a track mode won't automatically spin. It is annoying. It's something that it won't do, but at least you see it. This again is a track mode. So now you do have your systems over on the side here. Again, this is a, a new install. So I, I'm not hiding like some of the other systems like the ColecoVision and all that. Um, for example, if we do like the Commodore 64, it's there. It's got a nice little track mode. This even does have Kodi. Um, the only thing about this though is that you do need, if you want to do hardwired ethernet, you can hardwire ethernet to it, so it will work. But if you do want Wi-Fi, like a Wi-Fi, you need to buy the adapter. I could sell it to you, but you could literally buy the adapter for it. But real quick, just very simple. We're going to go to arcade. So we're going to select our game. And again, the track mode on this is way nicer. It's in alphabetical order still, but again, this is kind of looking like hyper spin. It is hyper pie and it does tell you like the game numbers you have here and all that. I do say all that a lot, I know, deal with it. Um, very cool though, this is it, this is what you're gonna get. Out of the box, very simple, it's gonna work. The controllers and all that will work. Number two, player one, very simple, pretty easy. Uh, again, we did hit Etsy, so Etsy store is up. Um, some good clientele there, a lot of new subscribers, so I appreciate you guys checking it out and subscribing. Um, I think I sold about maybe a good 10 units so far on Etsy, but I'm still doing a lot of the Craigslist and let go. Again, I, I am in New York, um, so if you ever wanted to come check it out, you want to hang out, you need some information, feel free to message me. Um, but I will tell you this, all the people that get these things, I get nonstop compliments and nonstop, you know, great like memories that they tell me about their kids experiencing the classics and all that, which is always a great thing to do. Um, so again, this is what you get. Um, I am right now using the Vilros, the Vilros gaming kind of setup. You can find that, you know, they have like the NES, you know, casing that comes with an HDMI power cord and all that. So it's a pretty good setup. Um, again, there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of fun. You know, people go crazy for these things and it's not that expensive. I try not to charge too much. But again, the big thing is that people could relive the classics and enjoy it um, again unfortunately sorry I'm not doing a whole screen kind of grab thing like my other videos but just real quick just to load up one game kind of gives you the nice little logo screen it's gonna load up the Atari and there you go for you to exit this you gotta do select and start together you exit out Let's do one, like a nice one. Let's do like, um, back out. Let's do the Sega. Sega Gen, uh, if I do Sega Genesis, the best one I enjoy, I mostly enjoy is a Pitfall. Um, old school Pitfall. Again, you could kind of hold it down. There is a game counter on the side here. Again, I didn't really rehearse this. I didn't practice this. So we're kind of just winging this as we go. Let's do uh, Royal Rumble is old school. It's a very old school game. Let's do it. Again, you press enter, you press X, really. Um, pretty easy. Again, I will give you like the whole like button layout. Um, essentially with the Sega Genesis, it's like A, B, C. I remember this as a kid. Again, just breezing through this so you can kind of see it. Some people aren't a fan of the 16 by nine stretch. So you could let me know. I'm gonna again make a tutorial on how to switch it um, to four by three. I'm playing freaking WWF over here. Um, I personally don't mind the, the stretch. I am close to the screen, so it doesn't look that great. Usually I'm you know about four feet away from the system. So it's up to you. Some people have their preference. Again, once you get bored, you do select start, your exit out, that's it. Once you wanna exit, you wanna turn it off, you could leave this on. I put this inside bar top, so this is on. 
This computer again is great. It doesn't really get too hot. It does have the heat sinks on it. It does have the fan in it. So it doesn't get that hot. I do leave these on on my bar tops. They, they stay on 24 seven. I have a customer that bought a bar top and he put it inside of his Airbnb like house as like an upsell and he leaves it on and it's on all night and people go nuts for it. It's a great touch. Um, again, once you are done, if you do want to do it, you just kind of hit the switch, you call it a day and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Super NES, SNES Mini Killer. 16,000 games, 128 gigabyte SD card, no BS. I don't know if you can even see that, but it's 128. The big thing again with these memory cards and these systems, you know, you need to get a very good memory card. You can't do a cheap $10 memory card. I tried it, it doesn't work. You need a fast performing memory card. Guys, I'm gonna call a night on that. I'm glad you guys checked it out. I'm really glad that a lot of people are checking it out on Etsy. Again, any little question, any little comment, just let me know. Thanks guys.